We welcome you to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville, Florida, the Home Depot SEC. On CBS, the 52nd meeting between the Gators of Florida and the Seminoles of Florida State. Bobby Bowden, who a week ago won his 300th game as the head coach at FSU. And Urban Meyer, who is in his third year as the head coach of Florida. This team out of the uh, contention for a national championship this year, but they are still the defending titleist. Seven and four, Florida State against eight and three. And it's Jocelyn Shaw and Pat Davis, the deep men. This is Pat Davis. And he stops at the 20 yard line. As uh, Florida State, they uh, we're getting set. <laughs> Fern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, welcome to all of you. Gary, not the oldest rivalry, but certainly one of the most intense between and, these two. And you know, I think for the first time in a long time, Vern, this is more about next year than this year. We know Florida is going to be an excellent football team. Florida State has showed the beginnings that they're on their way. The changes that Bobby Bowden has made are starting to take effect. First down and 10. Drew Weatherford is in at quarterback. Here's the handoff. This is Preston Parker getting his second start as the running back. Started and ran for in excess of 100 last year in a win over Maryland. Drew Weatherford benched in the Alabama game in Jacksonville. That was the fourth game of the year. Gave way to Xavier Lee, but then came back uh, three games later. Rose, Hudson, McMahon, Claude, and Boatman up front. Fag, Carr, the wideouts, Parker in the backfield with Holloway. The tight end is Graham. Out of the spread. They hand it off to Parker. He goes left and is spilled at the 26-yard line. And let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Vernon Gary, Tennessee up by three. And moments ago, Andre Woodson looking to find Jacob Tammy. You see the ball is picked out of the air by Ricardo Kemp. Now the Volunteers have the ball and trying to wind down the clock. Kentucky is out of timeouts. It's 31-28. That could get them in the SEC championship. Third and five. Little motion from Derek Harvey. Weatherford gets a, around him. There is a flag down. Weatherford appears to have enough for the first down if the play stands, and I think it will. Yeah, they'll probably decline it because uh, Weatherford uh, saw the offsides right in front of him with Harvey. You know, every all those defensive linemen are trying to time up that silent snap count, and that time Harvey didn't time it up, and he jumped into the neutral zone. Offsides, number 91 on the defense. The penalty will be declined. Will result in a first down. Yeah, we continue with the lineups. Here's Harvey, McMillan, Pouncey, and Cunningham on the front four. Jones, Brandon Spikes, Dustin Doe are the linebackers and the secondary suspect. Wandy Pierre Louis, right joiner, and Joe Hayden. Now let's double check and make sure Hayden is out there. He is not. He's not out there. Joe Hayden is not starting. And Jacques Rickerson, number 23, is out at right corner. Here's Weatherford, quick flip, Parker. And he's out near the 38-yard line. The diversity that uh, Preston Parker can give Florida State is really tough for a defense to handle. They don't know, prior to breaking the huddle, whether he's going to line up at tailback or at wide receiver, and in now he's just as dangerous either. So that really causes problems for a defense because substitution-wise, they don't tip off where he lines up. There's the handoff. Parker, big hole, and he elusively works his way across midfield to the 49-yard line. That's a pickup of 12, and Brandon Spikes makes the stop. Yeah, he, he's in that, you know, uh, frame of, a, you know, a Reggie Bush where he breaks the huddle and you say, where is he going to go? And when you're a defense and you can see Florida right there overran him, you're thinking, all right, speed to the outside, speed to the outside, and then he gashes him right up the gut. 113 
yards last week. Now Anton Smith is in. He's hurting. He's got a shoulder problem, but he uh, indicated that he'll give it a try. Weatherford back. Left side, it's caught at the 43-yard line by Joslyn Shaw, number 80. Only his 13th catch of the season. Drew Weatherford, a, a guy who's uh, had the job, has had great stats all year, right? Vern? I mean, yes. one interception all year, and yet he got benched in that game we did against Alabama. Xavier Lee came on, and then you can see Weatherford stayed with it. He did not give up, and look at how much better he's playing since that benching against Alabama. He's close to becoming only the second player in FSU history to throw 200 passes without an interception. Chris Winky did it back in 98 uh, and 99. There's Florida had to take a timeout because they had 12 men on the field, and they would have been penalized. In fact, the flag came out, but they got the timeout. timeout. Florida, that's their first timeout. So the time comes, uh, the timeout comes with 11.46 to go in the first quarter. Well, and, and you know, I think, Vern, he, he won this football team over in that Alabama game when he got benched. And we noticed at that time, remember, right. sure during do. a touchdown by Xavier Lee, it was a touchdown pass, and it's your guy that replaced you, and you stay involved, and you're excited. His teammates noticed that. And when he got his shot again, they said, we'll play for this guy. And when he came back, his numbers have been outstanding, and this Florida State defense has really progressed, excuse me, offense has really progressed. Well, he has now thrown 199 passes without an interception. He has the one you see on the right side of the graphic this year. 60%, 1,600 yards, second down and two. Deep handoff to Anton Smith. He's got a first down as uh, Florida State works after the opening kickoff. And they've got uh, a first down at the 36-yard line. See, if you're looking at the Florida defense, you're, you're saying, where really do I want to attack? I mean, they're, they're very injured in the defensive tackle spot, and they're very weak in the secondary. So now you're saying, what, what do I really want to do? And I, I think the plan is both. Third, or rather, uh, first and ten. And they'll go from the spread. Two wide receivers to the right side, and Parker is the running back. He gets the handoff, goes left, tackled at the 35-yard line by Mike Pouncey. One of the freshman twins for this team. His brother Marquise is a starting guard in the offense. He was a backup lineman offensively, and they switched him midseason to the defensive side of the Yeah, and, and he's turned in to be a plugger. He, he's going to be one of those guys that stops the run and, and, and just stand. He's not a great pass rusher. I don't really know how he could be. He hadn't any practice at right. defensive line. So he's in there just taking up big space and has done a good job. Second down and eight. Reverse. Joslyn Shaw. What a block he got from Weatherford. Oh, boy. The quarterback leads the way and cuts out a defender. Well, he, he won his team over by staying in this football team when he got benched. And then he continues to do it. As you can see, all the flow goes one way, and then this is wide open. He gets major right right here. Look at that outside leg. You throw at that outside knee, and that's exactly what he did. Great block by Drew Weatherford and a pickup of 25 yards. First down at the 11 yard line. Preston Parker is the running back. Play fake Weatherford got a man open tipped and incomplete. Major right. Now let's update you on Tennessee and Kentucky. Here's Tim. All right, Vern, Kentucky did get the ball back, and on a crucial third and 11, Andre Woodson, 16 yards to Jacob Tammy. They've got the ball near midfield. I do want to make a correction. There are two timeouts left, so ample time for Kentucky to either tie or take the lead in this game. Back to you. All right, Tim. And, and we've watched so many of these games, we're not surprised by anything, are no, we? No, no, <laughs> no. No, no, no. Second down, 10. 
Quarterback draw. Weatherford down at the three yard line. Tackle made by Brandon Spikes. Under 10 to go first quarter. It's third and two. Example again now. Preston Parker. Now he was a go to wide receiver who is now lining up at tailback. When he went in motion that time, he matched up with a linebacker. In fact, Preston Parker, after the play, put his hands on his head and said, I can't believe what they're trying to cover me with. Why aren't you throwing me the ball? <laughs> Third and two. High formation. Play fake, Weatherford, pressure, tipped. Incomplete, it'll be fourth down. Derek Harvey got a hand up. And he's got a big wind, wind span, there's no doubt about that. You have to throw around those guys or get that offensive line to knock those hands down. Watch Harvey come around to the outside. It was just one hand, really. And actually, it was decent coverage by Florida. It would have been a tough throw anyway. That'll bring on Gary Sismasia. He's 23 of 29 for the season. This will be a chip shot 21 yards away. Knocks it home. A very impressive opening drive by the Seminoles of Florida State. They go 80 yards and get the 21 yard field goal on the first drive of the ball game and take a 3 nothing lead. It, it really was. It was workmanlike. They did it and they they are running this offense now around Preston Parker and we all know who Florida is going to run their offense around. Don't we? I think it could be the guy wearing 15 right. <laughs> it sure is. 13 plays, 76 yards officially. And it took 547 off the clock. Says Mejia from 21 yards away. And Drew Weatherford, impressive leadership. And the most impressive was the block. And so now the sophomore, Tim Tebow. He has, uh, he has it all. He has it is basically what he has. And, you know, when he, we first saw him a year ago, you know, he was bringing emotion. He was different than Chris Leak. And we saw him start that way this year. And then we saw that power as a quarterback. He was the physical presence. And now lately, he is learning how to become a quarterback. And now he's really becoming lethal because he's got four wide receivers out there. He's got a running game. And he also has the threat of running himself. Vern, I think... These will be his best running stance he ever has because they're going to add a running back in the future and he's going to become a better passer. He's never going to have to play like he did this year. And this guy right here, me, didn't think he could do it. I did not think he could survive the SEC doing what he has done this year. Well, survive and surpass. 26 yeah, and 20. Absolutely. The first player in NCAA history to throw for more than 20 and to run. Here's a squib kick. And the Gators will take it at the 37 yard line. And there's a scrum out at the 48 yard line. I, I don't mind the squib kick, but that was too conservative. You know, you're conceding 40 yard line field position to Florida. That's going to be tough on your defense. Well, that said, uh, you've uh, met Tim Tebow and take a look at his stats, the sophomore from. Nearby 68% of the season. 68 percent Isn't that stunning? 26 touchdowns and six interceptions. I, I told people he'd never do it. Watkins, Tart, Miller, Pouncey, and Metter. The offensive uh, line, there's Caldwell, Harbin, Percy Harbin back after two weeks out with migraine headaches. He's the deep back in the eye. They hand it off to him, and he is in trouble. Now let's go back to New York. Once again, here's Tim. All right, Vern, Andre Woodson continues this drive, keeping it alive on a third and three, hitting Raphael Little. They are setting up for a potential game-tying field goal. The ball at the 33 now. One timeout remaining for the Big Blue. Back to you, Vern. All right, thank you, Tim. It's 3-0 here with 834 to go in the first. And here is Tebow with an empty backfield. Goes short to Cornelius Ingram. And Ingram inside the 45 on the second down play. Derek 
Nicholson makes the stop after a gain of 13. Defensively for the Seminoles, Brown, Thacker, Fluellen, Nefi, Moffitt up front. The linebackers are Watson, Nicholson, and Gino Hayes. And the secondary, Carter, Williams, Roll, and Robinson, who has six interceptions for the season. Easton Moore is in the backfield along with Percy Harvin. They hand it off to uh, Easton Moore. He comes left and doesn't get much. That's uh, basically the innovation that Urban Meyer has brought to college football. He and Rich Rodriguez basically are the two guys. Uh, it is almost a triple option out of shotgun formation. Uh, we, we, we've seen everybody do it. We even saw Derek McFadden do it yesterday, didn't we? Yes. Same play. Second down and nine after the one-yard gain. Three-nothing here midway through quarter number one. Here's Tebow. Puts it in Harvin's belly, brings it out, throws it away as he's being chased. And once again, let's get you back to New York. Here's Tim. The drive continues, Vern, as you see Andre Woodson going to Dickey Lyons. This is a third and 15 play, and uh, just a completion moments ago, a complete pass inside the five-yard line, so a chance for Kentucky to win it outright. Lonas Sieber also with a chance to tie it, potentially. We'll keep you posted. All right, Tim. Of course, so much on the line. If Tennessee wins, they face LSU next week in Atlanta. If Kentucky wins, it's going to be Georgia against LSU third and nine three nothing here this is the down third and long that FSU's defense must win blitz Tebow boy oh, he's getting a big rush in the corner There's timeout ah and there's a flag down as well And a little join going on. Nephi Moffitt is part of that. And I think Florida State must try to make this a physical game. It's very difficult to do that against Florida. Now, was the timeout? Before the snap, ah. delay of game on the offense, number 15, five yard penalty, remains third down. Now, Urban Meyer will be letting the referees know that we'll take some hits from Tebow before the whistle blows, but afterwards, we don't want Geno Hayes smacking our quarterback in the head. That should have been a 15-yard penalty. Sure should have. Yep. And it was Geno Hayes who uh, provided the bulletin board material earlier this week. Here's Tebow. He'll step up. He'll run. Look at that. Oh, will Look he at run? That. I would imagine he's looking around saying, where's Gino Hayes? There he goes. See, see, this guy really likes it this way. I mean, he's different. He, he's got a, a linebacker mentality and a quarterback. Well, I don't even think quarterback body. I don't know what kind of body he's had. <laughs> but he has a linebacker mentality. The rougher it gets, the better he likes it. I mean, he just relishes this kind of stuff. And so a 16 yard gain on third and 14. Harvin. Out of bounds inside the 25. And once again, let's go back to New York. Here's Tim. Coming down to cases in Kentucky, Vern Andre Woodson goes with the fade route to Keenan Burton, but the penalty is on Brent Benson. First and goal with the two for Kentucky. 13 seconds left. And they still have a timeout left. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. And let's see, they'll stretch the chain and see if Harbin picked up the first down. Second and inches. Three nothing. I think Bobby Bowden right now is looking over at number 15 and goes, I got two more years of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Maybe I better rethink this thing through. So second down. Andre Caldwell goes wide to the right. Three nothing. And here's Tebow with the empty backfield again. Steps in under pressure. Oh. How about that? Here's Tebow. Touchdown, Florida. No one has ever seen anything like this Tim Tebow phenomenon. He goes 23, bangs in from the five. His 21st rushing touchdown of the year. You know, he, he's got to be 4-5 in the 42. I'll tell you. That,